Hello fellow book lovers and welcome back to An Organized Mess! Today we're going to talk about the books, especially the graphic novels and mangas that I've read in February. And after that, tomorrow, actually, I will upload the video about the novels that I read in February. Just so you know what's up ahead. So I want to start with something that was a reread and that was Neil Gaiman's The Graveyard Book. This is the graphic novel edition where each chapter is adapted by a different artist but it's basically just the story of The Graveyard Book. If you are not familiar with the story of The Graveyard Book, the story is about a boy whose family gets murdered by a man called Jack and the boy then uh, manages to escape and he escapes into a graveyard where a bunch of ghosts and a person, a creature, we don't know, named Silas is kind of watching over him from that point on and he grows up on this cemetery. Okay, let's talk about one other nice thing before we get into the disgusting stuff because I read two very extreme horrors this month. First, I want to talk about Icarus. This is sort of a very short glimpse into a life, the life of a person called Icarus who has the ability to levitate or fly even. And that gets discovered at his birth, so he's taken into a, a, a laboratory by scientists and the military and they watch over him, they do experiments on him, they want to use him as a weapon in what way ever, I don't know, it's not explained. This book does not have a lot of explanations. It's actually just a book on this very short moment of him realizing that he's in a prison, basically. I think one of Taniguchi's influences, if I understood it correctly, is that the story is very taciturn, so there's not a lot of talking. It's a That's why it's also a very quick read, although it seems like it's maybe a bit thicker, but there are just a lot of moments where the illustrations get the forehand, like they are the main focus of the story. It's rather a story told through images and as you can see. I would recommend to check this out if you come across it, but only if you're a person that doesn't care for like endings to be wrapped up or if some things are not explained because there's there is no explanation. Um, we're just getting thrown into this world, we don't know why Icarus is who he is and we don't know what is happening in that world. You only get like this really really tiny tiny view um, on his life. Uh, then what, what should we do first? I think we're gonna go with the most gruesome thing that I've read first, which um, is Crossed. Yes, I've taken the recommendation of the graphic novel store manager and I have read <laughs> Crossed. Um, this is horrible. <laughs> it is gruesome. It is disgusting, disturbing. This is one of the yeah one of the most disturbing reads i've i've read in graphic novel version so beware <laughs> now the way that i understood it is that crossed is originally by garth Ines. there are two stories featured in this version that i have and one of them is by garth Ines. one is by an other author who also takes the crossed universe but does his own like little story in it and it's even more extreme i think than the original one i don't know if garth did anything else additional to his original story but yeah he created the universe at least crossed at first glance seems like this very straightforward zombie apocalyptic dystopian story which it kind of is the only difference is that the virus that spreads among people is something that makes them extremely sadistic and violent. This is all that I wanted from the violence by Delilah S. Dawson, you know, where it's also about the virus that spreads make, making people violent. But this is, this is where this should have been taken because this is violence, this is gruesome and crossing all the lines. So I just I just need to make sure that if you're intrigued by this and if you want to check it out, make sure to look up trigger warnings if you need to. Some certain images I can never unsee. <laughs> 
And I was aware of that. I was aware that I was going into extreme violence, gore and yeah, stuff that mm, is, is sickening, okay? Because it is extreme, it is. It deserves the title of extreme horror. The thing is now, I still believe that this was an outstanding graphic novel. So I would even call it my graphic novel of the month, but I don't want you to take it the wrong way. This is a source of recommendation as a Serbian film would be. If you are a person that can take a generous amount of this uncomfortableness and disgust and gore and violence, like then then you you are the person that I am recommending this to. But just prepare yourself that you probably will need a shower after it. And after this very questionable graphic novel of the month, simply because it was outstanding, I'm gonna move to something that is very similar but different in another way, and that is um, Starving Anonymous, which is by Yu Kuraishi, and the art is by Kazu Inabe. And like I did read the entire series, so just so you know, this is the first volume that I own and the rest I read online. This starts out the same way that Battle Royale does, with our protagonist riding a bus and then all of a sudden everybody falling unconscious and like his last glimpses are somebody with a gas mask. So, you know, it's like a sort of, is it a heist or a, what is it if you take people somewhere? So it's a sort of kidnapping of an entire bus and when he wakes up again, our protagonist, he finds himself in an environment with obese humans. I, don't, I can't say it otherwise. They're like really, really, big, uh, unnaturally big, and they are feeding on tubes and they seem to not care for anything but the food. You pretty quickly kind of come to the understanding that you're in some sort of a feedlot, you know, where people just get fed a lot um, in order to for them to grow thick and have more meat. The, the reason why I can compare it to Crossed in some ways is that this is as effectively sickening. This is also very heavy on the gore. So if you enjoy that and you haven't checked this out, it's a fun read because it doesn't take itself too seriously. Um, I myself am more of a fan of like spooks type of horror. I like ha haunted things and like creepy things. Uh, not that much violence. Uh, it's actually really sickening to me. But from time to time, I do read those books um, just to see what they can offer. And this was effectively disgusting. It is in no way able to compete with Cross in, in a way of who did it more disgustingly or sickeningly. No way, Cross uh, takes to win for sure, hands down. Just because this one has this element of I can't other way say it. It, it is element of shonen to it. There are heroic characters with special abilities <laughs> that make it all seem like this fun little exciting adventure <laughs> where everybody gets killed and split in half and stuff like that, okay? Just, just imagine. So extreme violence and horror and shonen. <laughs> So maybe this is why it's not as dark after all, just keep in mind this is still age restricted at 18 and that, that is very justified. One final thing, I want to make a comment on the art style. There was just one thing that bothered me throughout the whole story and that is that the main character, as you can see here, he has no parting. Why does his hair not have parting? It looks like a turban, which is fine if it was but it's not, it's hair. And you can see it from behind, you can see that it's hair. But whenever he's like shown from the front, you don't, there should be a split. Like there should be a line going somewhere just to see that this hair. So minor issues with the character design as well. And the final manga that I've read this month, forgot that I've read it, but I just remembered because it was behind me. It just, how could I not notice you? That was Tomie by Junji Ito. I read Tomie, yes, exactly. And this is so much fun, y'all. <laughs> this is so much fun. This is, uh, this is actually Junji Ito's first uh, story that he ever, I think, published. Tomie, for everybody who has not seen my um, TBR, is a femme fatale in a way. She's uh, the most deadliest and beautiful woman to ever have existed. And nobody can resist her spell. Like all men fall for her. 
that's sort of her thing, okay? And they fall so much for her that they, at, in, at the end, always want to kill her. This is how the story starts out, by the way, with her death, <laughs> with somebody cutting her into pieces because they loved her so much, I think. But nonetheless, I also don't consider this a spoiler because it's such a repetitive pattern for Tamiye. All of her stories, or almost all of her stories, go like this. And I wouldn't have imagined something that would always end sort of in a similar way to entertain me so much, but it did. <laughs> so this collection contains all of the stories of Tamiye, so all of her unsatisfiable compulsions to ruin everyone's life, especially those of men. And one of my most favorite stories, however, is one where she battles herself because she like she regrows from herself like a starfish. Whenever you cut her up, there are just all of a sudden 10 different Tamiyes running around. And then, you know, she just tries to make other men remove the other Tamiyes, which are just not the original and just not her. It's, it's so fun, so definitely. If you've never read Tamiyes stories, I would honestly, this is pretty cool. And now because this contains all the stories from start to finish, you can definitely also see the artistic journey that Junji Ito went through. In the first story, for example, you can see a lot of imperfections, like a lot of rough lines. I think it's hand-drawn, I can believe so, because the story is from 1987, I think before. A lot of digital help for artists was available, but then later on you see how everything becomes smooth, he has probably a bunch of other drawers who help him out. And it's really nice uh, to see how the art style as well changes to become like the pretty flawless Tamiye that she is in the end. All in all, this story is just so over the top and I think that at one point Ito just wanted to have fun with his own creation and just, you know, made up a bunch of stories that were ridiculous it's like just to see where Tommy would take it and not to take himself or the story too seriously otherwise it wouldn't come to those very very comical scenarios of Tommy like <laughs> as I said fighting herself she is definitely by the way an iconic character so if you are a massive Junji Ito fan and you have not you know checked this one out or any other Tommy stories she's such a staple in his works so definitely get to it if you haven't yet so that's it with my video thank you so much for watching um, and i will see you at another time in another video bye